I'm gonna start standing, so go to your mat or to the floor if you find it less slippery. Get your feet, keep width distance apart. Now, align your second toe with the center of your ankle, so take your toes a little bit inwards. Big toe looks inwards slightly. Now put the weight mostly on the front one third of the foot, but don't lift your heels. Now from here, zip up your quads, getting your kneecaps a little bit closer to your hip joints, lift them. Now don't let your legs relax at all, but tuck your tailbone a little bit towards the front of the room. Don't let the quads go. Now in this position, you should already feel quite a few muscles, inner thigh, outer thigh, glutes, quads, your feet are probably wanting to turn out, don't let them. Now, shoulder blades go a little bit closer together to each other and they pull down towards your bum. You grow a little taller from the back of your neck. Then you lift your gaze and you push your chin in. Now reinforce the tailbone forward because it's usually the thing that goes away. And now without losing your back body, Pull your lower ribs towards your rib cage. Push your whole abdominal wall back towards your spine. Inhale here to grow a little taller. Exhale to reinforce all these muscle activations that you have going. Inhale taller. Exhale, come on forward, but the abdominal wall in. Inhale taller. Exhale, shoulder blades together, but rib cage tuck it in. Last one, inhale. On this next exhale, you take your chin to your chest and you're gonna start folding forward, but think rib cage folding over lower back. So don't let your abs collapse before they have to. Keep tucking your tailbone forward until the curve reaches your lower back and your pelvis starts to untuck, but only mildly. Go as far down as you can without relaxing your legs. Inhale here. Exhale to let go your upper body and the back of your head. Inhale here. Make sure your quads are on, pulling the kneecap towards your hips. Exhale. Relax your shoulders. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Put a small bend in your knees. Stack your tailbone forward. Lift your abs. Start stacking up your spine. Lower back gets vertical fast. Then middle back, neck is lost. Remember to add up all the muscle activations that you had in the beginning, inhale. Exhale, chin to chest. Try and keep your arms relaxed, but be very mindful to not relax your abdominals before you have to. They are always slightly contracted. Stay here, inhale. On your exhale, we're gonna activate our abdominal wall. We're gonna tuck our tailbone forward and we're gonna go huh, punch in the stomach trying to find a small curve in the lower back. You inhale to stay. You exhale to try and get your ribcage a little closer to your hip bones. Inhale, stay. Exhale, tailbone forward. Do two more cycles, inhale, exhale. Thinking that you're trying to imprint your lower back towards the ceiling. So you're not getting any higher, but you should feel a strong contraction on your abdominal wall. One last inhale takes you forward. On the bottom, exhale to bend your knees slightly, tailbone forward. Punch in the stomach, lifts you up, stack your spine until you're vertical. Inhale at the top. Exhale, chin to chest. Fold yourself top, making your way down. Do not let your body relax. The arms are relaxed, let the rest now. Inhale at the bottom. Exhale to bend your knees significantly, but I still want the weight on your forefoot. From here, we're gonna do one more cycle of inhale. Exhale to find that imprint sensation towards the ceiling, tailbone is wrapping forward, belly button is lifting towards your spine. Next cycle, we're gonna lift our arms, extending our middle back only. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, take your arms forward, extend your middle back. Middle back is the spine between your shoulder blades. Inhale here. Exhale to keep your middle back, but give me a tuck of the tailbone. It won't move, but there's a muscle activation there. Another inhale, grow a little roller from the top of your head. Exhale to get your abdominal wall flat against your spine. Inhale. Exhale, reinforce. Keep going, 
thinking that you want a flat lower back. You do not want an arch. Use your exhale to find that muscle support that will not let your lower back hurt. One more inhale. Exhale to fold forward, reinforce that imprint sensation towards the ceiling. Take one more inhale in the bottom. Use a strong exhale to start climbing your way up to a vertical position. Think about your glutes, think about your quads. Think about the abs staying in as you pull your shoulder blades together. Head goes last, lift from the back of the neck. Lift your gaze and a touch of a double chin here. Inhale, grow taller. Exhale, shoulder blades down to the floor. Ribs are whew, under control. Two more, inhale. Exhale, tailbone forward, belly button in. Last one, inhale. Exhale, stay as you are. Look at your feet. Are they still parallel? If they are, perfect. Now, let's step into the mat. We're gonna go for a chest lift. So before you go on your backs, check that your feet are hip width apart. Check that the big toes are slightly inwards to align the second toe with the center of your ankle. Find a neutral position of your spine, which means you have a slight arch on your lower back. There's a gap between the floor and your spine. Interlace your hands, get them behind your head, and check that you can comfortably take the weight of your head. Remember, your elbows don't need to be flat, they can be in a diagonal. You're gonna to inhale to prepare. Keeping your neutral spine, you're gonna lift your chest, lift both shoulder blades off the mat. You're gonna to inhale to reach a little bit taller. You're gonna exhale to go down. This is your pattern, but let's do one more slow one. Just to think about muscles, inhale. Exhale, lift. Stay up for me. Now, it's okay if your lower back is touching the floor as long as you're not pulling against it. So whichever position your lower back is, keep it exactly as it is. And as you come higher, try and push your lower abs closer to your spine. But your spine is still keeping this lift, but your abs are pulling in. Now your rib cage is pulling down. This can be a very deceiving exercise because we can do it not very well, but very easily. And I want you to do it very, very well and moderately easier. And now go down. Try and find that connection, that connection every time you go up. Inhale, prep. Exhale, up. Go a little higher, flatten your abs and down. Prep. Up. Higher. Down. Prep. And up. Higher. Down. We have two more. Try to get both shoulder blades off the floor. Next one, we're going to stay up. Prep for your rotation. Keep the neutral if you can. If there's too much pressure on your lower back, opt for an imprint. Inhale at the center. Exhale to turn your chest towards your right thigh. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Center. Right. Center. Center left. Keep swapping, thinking that this is a tiny, tiny ribcage rotation where you align your breastbone with your thigh, which means there's very little motion of the head, very little motion of your shoulders. Once you have the pattern, keep your gaze on your hips, trying to check if you have always the same amount of weight in both bones. We just have two more. Stay in the center. If you didn't have a neutral, try and get somewhat of one. Inhale there, go a little higher in your neutral. Reach your hands. Exhale to find an imprint. Reach and go a little higher. Try and keep this height of your chest as you take your arms overhead. Arms are straight, biceps are aligned with your ears. Now reach forward, regain the height that you lost. If you lost some height. And take your arms back. And take them forward to reinforce. Take them back. Don't let anything go. Forward, reinforce. And back. We just have one more. Forward. Back. Shoulder blades are still off the mat, we hope. Forward, stay. Reach, come higher. And with control, keeping your imprint, take yourself to the mat. No gap between the floor and the lower back. We're going to go for our pelvic curl. Take your feet closer to your bum. Check that you can tickle the backs of your heels. 
Check that your feet are still parallel, so there's a touch of big toe inwards. Knees are aligned. Find your neutral for me, so start to the gap. Get your shoulders to be open on the mat, but now push your rib cage in. Inhale to go back. Exhale to flatten your lower back on the mat, pointing your tailbone towards the ceiling. Point as much as you can without contracting your glutes at all. This is a work for your abs. One more inhale here. On your exhale, put the weight on your heels. Start lifting your pelvis towards the ceiling. Tailbone leads the way. You know you have a right and you have a flat line between your knees, your hips and your shoulders. Now, use an inhale to prepare, use an exhale to take your tailbone a little higher and your ribcage a little lower. And here you do need to use your glutes quite a lot. Inhale, prep. Exhale, tailbone up, ribcage down. One more prep. Tailbone up, ribcage down. Inhale here. Exhale to start making your way down. Vertebrae by vertebrae. As you go down, you find a deeper tuck of your belly, taking your tailbone even more towards the ceiling. Go through an imprint, and then without letting go completely of your abdominal wall, rock your pelvis away, find a neutral inhale. Exhale, imprint. Put the weight in your heels. Make your way up. Find that flatness and reinforce. Tailbone up, ribcage down. Now again, try and get your shoulders a little bit more open without letting go of your ribcage. Get your knees a little bit closer together. Inhale there. Exhale, slow motion down. Think about putting your middle back on the floor with a strong curve of the lower back. Find your imprint. Inhale to neutral. Next one, we're gonna stay up. Imprint. And make your way. Let's add all our components, tailbone up, ribcage down, shoulders open, knees together. Plant your feet on the floor, don't move your heels, but try and drag the whole weight of your body towards your feet. Now take your pelvis a little higher, but take your bum a little closer to your heels. And higher and closer, higher, closer, knees a touch closer together. Stay there, we're gonna work with the right leg. You're gonna point the right leg, aligning both thighs with each other. From here, you're gonna take the leg up to 90, and then you're gonna stretch it back to parallel. And 90, and parallel, keep going. Thinking that I'm looking for your hips to be level. If this is too much on your lower back, take your bum a little bit closer to the floor, but work with an even pelvis. Meet me at 90. We're going to do a semicircle going outwards. The leg stays parallel. Don't go turn up. When you feel like you're starting to lift the left side body, that's when you need to come back to parallel and ceiling. Semicircle, parallel. And up. We have two more. Check that your hips are leveled. Last one. Stay thighs parallel. Flex your knee. Put your foot on the floor. Give me your highest pelvic curl position. Again, reinforce, tailbone up, your face down. Shoulders open, knees together, weight is towards your heels. Stretch the left, start with your arcs. Go to 90, and thighs parallel. And 90, and parallel. Touch your hips if you need a little bit more feedback to understand if they are leveled. Last one, meet me at 90, semi-circle. See how far can you go before your body's uneven? And then start curling to parallel and ceiling. Semi-circle, down and ceiling. Don't let your working leg turn out. We're working with a parallel hip. One more, meet me, thighs parallel. Flex your knee, foot finds the floor. Highest pelvic curl, tailbone up, rip it down. Shoulders, knees, drag your weight towards your heels and go a little higher. Super slowly down now. Top of your middle back's on the floor. Middle part of your middle back's on the floor. Bottom part of your middle back's on the floor. The shoulders are still open. Stay here for a second. Once your middle back's on the floor, tuck your tailbone higher towards the ceiling, knees closer together. Now the top of your lower back reaches the floor. 
middle part of your lower back, your bum is still floating, sacrum touches the floor, and only now, keeping your abs alive, you find a neutral. Keep this neutral, keep the ab activation pulling downwards, stretch your left leg down, take your right leg towards the ceiling. If this is uncomfortable for this leg, bend your knee. It's better to have a bent knee than a leg in a diagonal with an angry hip flexor. So we want the weight to track on your hip. So this is acceptable, okay? If you're with me, stretch the leg, flex your ankle, arms are open wide, palms are to the ceiling, but the shoulders are down away from your ears. We're gonna do one slow motion leg circle and then four faster ones. Leg is gonna cross the midline as far as you don't lift the right bum from the floor. So the hip is pulling to the floor and only the leg is trying to stretch away. This is an active stretch of your outer thigh. Now keep reaching away as you take your leg into that diagonal. Find a parallel position where both legs are reaching towards the back of the room, towards away, gaining some space in the front of your hips. Now keep this reaching, keep that space, go outwards, leg goes as far out, as close to the floor, as the opposite side of the body does not lift. Now, zip up your abs and try and use your inner thigh to bring you back up. We're gonna do four faster ones where you'll have to go smaller so your whole body doesn't move. So test yourselves. Cross and go around. Cross and around. Check that the straight leg on the floor is not going inwards and outwards. Check that both shoulder blades are on the mat. Now let's reverse one slow one going outwards. As far out as the opposite side of the body is not lifting from the mat. Keep reaching and going down. Find that stretching parallel where both hips get a little bit longer. Cross the midline, try and find that stretch you had on the outside of your thigh. Keep the leg that's on the floor parallel. Use your outer thigh to bring your leg back up to vertical. Smaller, sharper, fast ones. Go out and around. Out, around. Both shoulder blade on the floor. Supporting leg is parallel. Now stay here, interlace your hands, get them behind your back, behind your head. Inhale to prepare, exhale to chest lift with an imprint. So come up, imprint your spine. As high up as you can will help you to give you stability. Four leg circles towards the inside, four towards the outside, fast and sharp. And one, two, three, Four, meet me at the top. You probably found a wiggle, try and not have any, and go outwards and one, two, three, four. Point your right, tabletop and floor, pick up your left, tabletop, ceiling flex, head to floor, open your arms. Slow leg cycle, crossing the midline. Find a stretch on the outside of your thigh, Leg that's on the floor stays parallel. Now keep reaching down. Find both legs parallel, pull them away, get some space in the fronts of your hips. Take the leg out. Careful with the furniture. As far out as the opposite side of the body doesn't lift. Now use your inner thigh to bring your leg up. Four faster ones, don't let the rest of your body move. Go in. And around, in, and around, two more. Last one. Meet me at 90, slow motion, leg comes out, we're reversing the circles. As far out as your body doesn't lift, bring your leg down to parallel. Keep reaching into the distance as you cross the midline. And now enjoy your stretch for a second, and then use your outer thigh to take your leg up to the ceiling. Four fast ones, out and around. Remember that you need to do this cycle a little smaller than the slow motion one in order to keep your body stable. Meet me towards the ceiling. Interlace your hands, support your head. Inhale, prepare, exhale, chest lift, find an imprint. Four fast ones, starting by crossing the midline. In and around, in and around. The highest your chest lift is, the more stable you'll be. 
There's very little stability here though. Now reverse left foot towards the outside. Out and around and around. Last two. Give me your highest chest lift. Last one. Stay here. Inhale. Exhale a little higher. Point your top foot. Take it to tabletop. Pick up the leg that's on the floor. Take it to tabletop. Connect heels and ankles. Knees and ankles. Grab the back of your thigh. Now legs are going to pull away. You're going to keep your imprint as you lift from the floor. Keep your legs, keep your shins parallel to the floor and tabletop. We're going to go for our teaser rolling combination. We start with a teaser prep so everyone likes tabletop. You can either decide to hold the backs of your thighs or you can have your hands reaching parallel to the floor. Whichever variation you choose, we're going to sit over the sits bones, try and find an arch on our lower back, get our shoulder blades connected and up. We're going to do full teaser preps. So you're going to find a curl on your tailbone to slowly put your lower back on the floor, no momentum. And then you're going to reinforce that imprint to come up and find that extension that takes your body, your torso into a diagonal, slight diagonal. And you're going to curl, find the floor, reinforce the curl, come up. We have two more. If you were holding, maybe do the last one without holding. Challenge yourself a little bit and curl down and up. Now bend your knees, hold the tops of your thighs, reinforce the curve in your lower back. We're going to prepare for three rollings. Elbows are up, shoulders are low. Keep the distance between chest and knees and between heels and bum. Try and keep this rounded curve position as you go back and come back up. Allow yourself half a second on the up position to reinforce your spine, even if you didn't lose your alignment. One more. Stay up. We're going to prepare to tease a one. Legs are going to be straight, legs are, uh, arms are going to be up. You can do it with a tabletop variation. Legs are straight or bent, but whatever they are, they don't move. Take your arms up. Torso is going to go to the floor as the arms go down and overhead. Torso is going to come up as the arms go down and overhead. Three more. Down, overhead, down, overhead. If your legs are straight, it's easier if you have them higher. If your legs are bent, it's easier if you have them higher. So stay high. Give me a good extension of the lower back. Bend your knees. Right arm is under right leg, left arm under left leg. Connect heels and toes, prepare for your seal puppy. Hands are on the tops of the feet. Shoulder blades, not shoulder blades, sorry. Lower back is curved. So find that sensation of a punch in the stomach, take your tailbone towards the ceiling. Now, shoulder blades are down. We're gonna tap three times the feet in the top position. One, two, three. We're gonna roll back, tap three times here. One, two, three. And go up. One, two, three. And back. One, two, three. You have two more. And again, allow a stopping position when you're beating to reinforce the curve of the lower back. Meet me at the top of the next one. Preparation for teaser two. Again, a double leg tabletop is available. Get your legs to tabletop, extend them, arms reach. Arms go up as legs go down, legs go up as arms go down. Torso does not move. So really try and get your legs as high as they were in the first one, it really helps. Last one, stay here. Arms go up, legs tabletop, hold. Punch in the stomach, elbows up, shoulders down. Four rollings. And back. And up. And really use this moment of an abdominal connection with an imprint to give your lower back a little bit of a breather between the teasers. Meet me at the top. Last teaser is the teaser three. Legs are up, arms are up, tabletop is available, but it's harder because the legs need to go, not to the floor, but they hover. Extend your legs. Extend your arms. Upper body is equal, it's the same as teaser one. Legs go down, but they hover. So, arms go down, legs go down. Head goes to the floor, legs hover. And now come up. Body and legs. Arms go down and overhead. Down 
and overhead we have two more down overhead down overhead last one remember bring your legs higher because it's easier stay here for a second give me an extension of the lower back bend your legs to tabletop interlace your arms and legs connect toes and ankles seal puppy find the imprinted spine but drop your shoulders three taps one two three go to the back one two three forward one two three three more seal puppies take the time to curve your spine try not to lose your form as you go backwards and forwards and if you're still playing with it a little bit oh well that's all right come up meet me at the top position we're gonna unravel to do our neck pull so get your arms free stretch one leg out second leg out try and keep this curve get your arms forward and reaching until your shoulders are over your hips we're gonna go down as a roll up so inhale here exhale to start putting your spine down arms are parallel to the floor try and find the mat with your lower back stay there for a second now as the shoulder blades find the mat your arms are going to go overhead but you need to keep your rib cage down now preparing for neck pull you're going to interlace hold your head if you cannot get up like this go up and if you're doing a roll up or bend your knees and hold your thighs a little bit if you're with me inhale to prepare exhale to do an imprint which doesn't happen but as muscle activated as if you were doing an imprint from here we're gonna go up just now keep this curve keep this curve keep this curve take your forehead towards your knees now start stacking your spine think lower back middle back neck now hinge only from your hips to take your torso into a diagonal find a shake in your abs if you're not finding it you need more extension on the lower back once you've got no hole tuck your tailbone start putting your spine on the floor tailbone is reaching towards the ceiling slow motion down and hands uh, head find the floor four ones in a row and up keep the curve keep the curve keep the curve touch lengthen hinge tuck go down no momentum and up and curve lengthen hinge tuck find the floor three two more well three would be bending and up and hinge the last one we're going to stay up up and stay to the equivalent of your roll up now we're going to go for the boomerang so check if you have enough space behind you uh turn out your thighs and stack your legs it doesn't matter if it's left or right arms are parallel to the floor find a connection of the abs towards the lower back like you want to imprint your spine towards the back of the room now slowly we're going to put our spine down on the floor but our imprint is so strong that our legs are going to float from here hands find the mat legs come up keep this 90 relationship between thighs and body as you take your legs overhead now keep this strong sensation of a turnout as you swap legs we're going to roll out of it into a teaser so keep your thighs close to your chest come up arms go out arms interlace in the back as you interlace you extend your back legs find the floor arms come around and you find that that curve that connection of your abs two ones a little faster and go back find this connection always and go overhead swap roll out of it extend arms around interlace floor imprint and back and over swap roll forward extend found the floor a little bit too early and curve we're going to do a slow one go back and stay now your lower back is so imprinted that you can rock a little bit on the curve of your lower back we have 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 hands and over now mega turnout you're gonna give me um 10 beats swapping legs one two three four five six seven eight 
Nice, ten stay. Check that your legs are parallel to the floor. Give me a little bit more tailbone towards your face, but I'll use your glutes for the parallel of the legs. Ten more. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Does not matter which leg is up. Prepare yourself to come out of it in a teaser. Keep your thigh close to your chest. No momentum as you come up. Ten charge knots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, stay. Bend your legs, bring them into a cross. Bring your arms down. We're gonna go for the crab. You need space in the front of your mat and you need space in the back. If your mat is as long as my one, put a pillow or a towel somewhere in the front. We're gonna do the first one slowly, so you can remember, and then we'll go a little faster. Find that connection of the spine towards the back that we use for all rolling exercises. Find that punch in the stomach that we just did in rolling and still puppy. Now you're gonna hold your feet, get them quite close towards your bum, and in this position, knees are towards each other. They're not touching because it's difficult, but towards each other. Now find that punch and give me your shoulders down. Now we're gonna roll back and extend our legs like, like it's a rollover. So we're gonna go back and extend. From here, legs swap. Hold your feet again. As you roll forward, you're gonna bend your knees. You're gonna fold them over. Keep this arch, not arch, sorry. Keep this curve here. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. As you roll on top of it, head finds the floor. And now abs are pulling to the spine. Spine is to the ceiling. Hips are stacked on top of your knees. There's no, that there is weight in your head, but not too much. The weight is, whew, it's here towards the ceiling, is not here towards the floor. And now we get out of it. Keep your ears, your shoulders away from your ears. Keep the curve on your lower back, go back, extend, swap, hold, tuck already, and use that nice connection of the lower back to the ceiling. And go back, extend, swap, hold, go forward, imprint to the ceiling. We have two more. Extend, swap, hold, and forward. Next one, we're gonna stay with legs overhead. And stay. Now we're gonna prepare for the scissors. You can either, to prepare, put your feet down, you can bend them, you can, you can do whatever we want with your legs here. Now, our arms need to come down, and you need to get your arms as parallel as you can. Your hands are gonna make a shelf for your bum, as your lower back is going to arch. Find the knobbly bits on your lower back, so not the middle spine, but to the side, find your sacrum iliacs. That's the part you're going to be supporting. So, find that, put your hand there. Now bend your knees, and what I want you to do is to arch your lower back into your hands. Now this might be a little bit too much weight in your arms. If it's too much, do the same thing, but with your spine in an imprint. Extend your legs up, we're going to open for the scissors. One leg comes forward, second leg goes back. Try and keep your legs symmetric. Don't let one open more than the other. Two taps in the end. One, two. Legs cross as close to 90 as you can. And they swap. One, two. Cross and swap. One, two. Cross and swap. One, two. We have two more like this. Meet me at 90. Readjust your hands if you need to. I feel like almost everyone should because it's quite heavy on the wrists. And if you were doing the extended back option, let's go back into it. Now, scissors, a uh, bicycle is a scissor with a bend in the end. Go to 90 if you can. Open into your scissor. Top leg stays, bottom leg bends the knee, taps the floor if that's acceptable. If you can't tap the floor, just don't, just in the air. Now, Top leg is going to go down, bottom leg comes forward, find the scissor first, and then bend the knee, tap the floor. And paddle, and tap, paddle, and tap. If you have it, you, can, you don't need to stop in the scissor position. You can go a little bit faster, but I feel like I have much more control if I stop. So this is one of those that you really do what's best for you, okay? Last one. Meet me 
Let's 90. Bend both legs, bring them over and overhead. Arms extend, arms come around. Flex your ankles, hold the backs of your feet. You can also hold your cuffs if that's more comfortable and you can bend your knees if you need to. Now, let go of the right foot or right leg and point it towards the ceiling, two taps here. One, two. Swap legs in the air, two taps with the left. One, two. If this is too much, you can meet legs at the floor and then swap, one, two. The important thing here is that the leg that goes to the ceiling is as straight as you can get it and that the thing doing the two tiny kicks are your glutes, not your lower back. You, you are still aiming for a notion of an imprint on the lower back. Everyone's going to meet me with a right leg up. Take it as close to parallel as you can and now five pulses taking the leg towards the ceiling. Five, four, three, two, one. Swap legs. Left leg is to the ceiling, left leg is parallel, knee is as straight as you can. Five, four, three, two, one. Both legs on the floor, open them to a turn out. First position on the floor. Let's work first with the right, take it up. One, two. Swap legs in the air. One, two. Swap, one, two. Keep swapping, one, two. I want both legs equally turned out. Don't let your working leg drag your pelvis towards that side. You are going to give me one more. Meet me with a right towards the ceiling. Turn out that leg extra, but you only turn out as much as your supporting leg is turned out. Five beats. Five, four, three, two, one. Swap legs. Five, four, three, two, one. Both feet on the floor, take them to parallel, arms come around to the floor. Let's get out of it into a teaser, which is easy by now. And slowly find the floor and lift. Now, double leg tabletop, one foot to the floor, second foot to the floor. Legs are gonna be straight in front of you. Feet are pointed, but heels are on the floor. If this is too much, you can put a little bit of a bend or sit on a book. If you're with me, now well, wherever you are, <laughs> give me a straight lower back. Try to sit over your sits bones. Try and find a small arch here. Now get both shoulder blades together and down towards your bum, which means your spine gets a little taller. Now try and push your rib cage in without losing all this arching work you've done. Nothing moves in your center as you extend your arms outwards, palms face the ceiling. As we stretch our arms, the shoulder blades tend to leave the place, so closer and down. Now we're going to turn towards the right from our waist, which means the neck is not going and our hips are not going. Two taps here. One, two. Find the center, grow a little taller. Twist to the left. One, two. And center. One, two. Center. One, two. Center. Keep swapping sides thinking again that this is a small rotation. It's from the waistband upwards, which means it's most of your rib cage that's rotating. The arms, the neck and the head just go along for the ride with the rib cage. They don't have any extra rotation of themselves. You're gonna give me two up, one towards each side, and you're gonna meet me in the center. Grow a little taller from your spine, extend your arms a touch more. Inhale here. Exhale to drop your shoulder blades. One more inhale. Exhale, belly button in. And relax your arms. Pick up your legs into that double, double leg tabletop position. Keep your shins parallel, find an imprint. Take your spine down towards the floor with no momentum. With control, head finds the floor, arms go alongside your body. We're gonna extend the legs up and start with a rollover, preparing for the corkscrew advance. Legs go to 90, legs go to diagonal. And now 90 and roll over. No momentum because you don't need it. Now, find a strong connection of the spine 
We're at the back of the room. Belly buttons in, tailbone is towards your head. Legs stay together, big toes stay level as you twist your legs towards the right. Again, we're twisting from our waist, which means it's only from your waist downwards. Now, find an imprinted spine as you take your back towards the mat. Legs find the side, side what? Find the right side. And as they are on the side, give me a little bit of a, of a neutral. Now, keep this neutral as the legs go down. Keep the neutral to diagonal. Keep the neutral to the side. Now, use an imprint sensation to come back up with next to no momentum. And then you find the center when you're up. One more slow one towards the left. Twist the legs towards the left. Work through your spine to find a side. Now, you reach your neutral. Keep that neutral to go down. Keep the neutral to go to the side. Use an imprint to hike yourself up. And center. Fast ones, keep alternating. Right and down and around and center and left down and around and center this is one of those where like our leg circles when we go faster we need to cut a little bit on our range because it's much harder to control our pelvic girdle but also our shoulder girdle so play with it a little bit do a few smaller ones and then see how much more can you do without losing your technique. Do one more wherever you are. Meet me with legs overhead. Now, let's get out of it as a rollover. Flex open, tap. Now keep the shoulders flat on the mat as you put your spine down on the floor. Vertebrae by vertebrae. No momentum. As your feet find a ceiling you point and you do a round half circle to come to diagonal. Double leg tabletop, hold yourself and take a lift up, preparing for our side kick kneeling. You're going to kneel on one leg, shin is parallel to the toes of the mat. A uh, leg that's straight is parallel to the front of the room, so your big toe should be on the floor. Uh, the, this hand goes to the floor, not necessarily below your shoulder, but close to it. Top hand is flat on the back of your neck. Now, I want you to give me an open chest, but the elbow stays to the ceiling. Don't let it over open or catch yourself if something like that is happening. From here, shoulders are together, but rib cage is down, tailbone is forward, but the, 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 but the chest is still open. Now. We're going to lift the straight leg to parallel. We're going to flex our foot. You're going to take the foot forward and you're going to kick twice in the end range. One, two. You're going to point it. You're going to take it to the back. Kick twice. One, two. Flex forward. One, two. Point back. One, two. This is one of those where you need to allow a little bit of a sway of your spine, but as little as you have to, to be able to do the exercise. Other challenges is to keep not only the leg parallel in your hip, which is going to feel like a little bit of a turn in for you, but also parallel to the floor. So don't let it go up and down as you sway your leg backwards and forwards. Meet me, leg in parallel. Flex your foot. Take your toes towards the floor, take your heel towards the ceiling. Grow a little bit, pulling your bottom side body away from the floor. Take your leg as high as you can, leading with the heel. Higher, higher, higher. Point, toes go towards the floor. Try and use your top side body to come straight. Do it like a abnormal crunch, kind of. Opposite knee finds the floor, opposite leg stretches, turn in, big toe towards, big toe on the floor. Hand finds the floor. Push your side body away from the mat. Top hand is flat, connects with your head. Tailbone forward, shoulder blades together, ribcage in. Straight leg goes to parallel and flexes. Sway your leg forward, one, two. Point to the back, one, two. Flex forward, one, two. And point, one, two. Within your possibilities, 
try and do the, the two kicks in the end range quite sharp. And it might be that it's not really happening for you, but work towards that. And then check that your rib cage is still pulling in despite us opening it a little bit when we kick back. Check that the leg is in slight turn in and parallel to the floor. Meet me in parallel. Flex your foot, toes to the floor, heel to the ceiling. Take your leg as high as you can. Heel leads the way. Go higher, go higher, go higher. Point forward control. Find your top side body to whoosh, to lift you. Relax your arms. And turn yourself around. Get your belly against the mat to do our back extension block. These exercises are meant to be done with your legs together. If that's too much pressure on your lower back, take a little bit of a distance. If that's still too much, use a turnout. Uh, I will cue it with legs together. So be responsible and do the one that works for you. We're gonna start forehead on the floor. Hands are alongside our legs, connected to the outside of our thighs. Legs are straightened together, which means your kneecaps are not on the floor. Inhale here. Exhale to tuck your tailbone under. Press your pubic bone on the mat. Try and lift your belly button from the mat. It might not lift, but have the impression of lifting the weight from it. Shoulder blades are together, which means the shoulders never touch the floor. You're gonna inhale to reach your hands towards your knees, lift your chest. Exhale to go down with control. And lift and floor. Keep the tops of your feet on the mat and keep your shoulders far away from your ears. As you go up and down, check that your head stays aligned with the rest of your spine. Next one, you're gonna stay up. Now from here, give me more tailbone to floor, press your pubic bone further into the mat. Think about taking the weight away from your belly button. Take your shoulder legs closer together and I'll reach your hands more. Find an extension of the middle back that will take you higher. Go down with control, two more like so. Reach, stay. Tuck your pelvis in, connect the shoulder blades, reach and down. Last one, up. Tailbone down, pubic bone crescent into the mat, shoulder blades together, reach. Arms go second, hands go to the floor, forearms go to the floor. Keep your forearms parallel to each other, don't let them well, parallel there, but keep them aligned with your shoulders. Don't let them come too close because that's a, a pop out. Now from here, push your tailbone to the floor as much as you can. Lift your belly button away, but now give me a little bit of chest shining through your shoulders. Try and keep these two ideas happening despite them being opposite. We're gonna work with the right arm. You're gonna keep the same amount of weight on, on your legs, on each leg as you stretch your right arm forward and back down, no weight. And stretch forward and down. Try and keep the same amount of pressure on both sides of your lower back. It really helps to push the pubic bone into the mat. We have one more. Put your forearm on the floor, nothing moves, because the weight goes in the middle. And work with your left. Again, think about Growing your neck out of your spine. Press that pubic bone onto the mat. Keep both shoulders far away from your ears. You just have two more. Last one. Hand to the floor, forearm to the floor. We're gonna extend, place your hands on the mat and go into a cobra. Put your hands further away if that's too much for your lower back. Put your hands closer together if you have a lot of extension available. Now, wherever you are, I want your tailbone pushing in as much as you can. So don't let you, don't sink onto your back extension, lift from it. Take it into your hips. Now, swan dive prep. We're gonna do upper body fast. You're gonna bend your elbows, take your forearms to the floor, take your chest down. You're gonna stretch your arms to bring yourself back up. As you go down, your legs come along for the right, keeping the same arch between lower back and backs of thighs. You go forward and back. Forward, back. Keep it quite sharp, keep it quite dynamic, 
in order to be able to keep that arch available. We're gonna do one more, meet me at the top. We're gonna do full swan dive. The first one preps with hands to forehead and then arms go straight. I'll show you one prep with two full ones and then we do it all together. You're gonna go forward and back, forward, forward and up, hold. Let's do one prep, five full ones. Think about keeping your arms as high as you can. Bicep to ear like we did in the beginning of the class. Prepare, tap your tailbone, connect shoulder blades, shine your chest. First one, hands to forehead. Go forward and up and stretch. Up, stretch, up. Three more, two more. Last one, catch yourself. Tap your tailbone so far in that you bend your knees. Walk your hands under your shoulders. Press your whole spine towards the ceiling. Make it active. Think tailbone forward. Think forehead to stomach. Belly button to spine. Spine to ceiling. Stretch. Now get your knees and ankles together. Keep pushing until you find bum to heels. You can either get your hands closer and pull your spine towards the back of the room, tailbone up, or you can make your forehead to the mat, arms are forward or arms are back. All done. 